All right, so we'll start looking at an example um, data set. Uh, this is from um, a customer test flight uh, of a co-lined, uh, no, of, of a co-lined of a LIDAR um, on a gimbaled system. And as we go through, there is a series of files, each called PCAP, LIDAR 0 PCAP, LIDAR, what's that, 100,000 PCAP, 200,000 PCAP. And these are the, the data is sent from the LIDAR to the storage computer as packets. And these are just those packets stored as they come. And along with them is a file called LIDAR PCAP IDX. And that file is a listing of timestamps and how many packets came in. And so we use that to give an accurate time for when we received each of the packets so that we can then correlate those times with our IMU GPS data, because in the end, we're going to need to figure out where was the aircraft, how, what direction was it pointing in order to figure out where to put each of the returns from the LIDAR. So I'm gonna open up one of those LIDAR PCAP uh, one of those LIDAR PCAP files. So I'm going to open Capture File in the VeloView software, which is freely available from Velodyne. We only use it occasionally for looking at raw data. Um, and so I'll go ahead and look at LIDAR 0.PCAP. And what this is going to do, it notices that we had the VLP16 uh, LIDAR. And it loads it all up. And then I'm going to rotate my point of view and I'll start playing and talk a little bit about what's going on here. At this point the aircraft is actually sitting on the ground um, and there are six, this is somebody walking by the aircraft, and there's 16 light laser beams that are coming out. They spin around and the aircraft is about, there's a person walking away and when the aircraft takes off, if you look down here you can see um, uh, returns from the rotors um, on the aircraft, and we'll use those as part of our our, our processing. So, uh, capture files, so where was it? 4,000, 600,000. Open, rotate, and it's actually taken off at this point. Um, so the aircraft is now up in the air, and if we um, look at it, we'll go back to the beginning. Uh, the key thing to notice here is as the air, so the aircraft's just taken off, and as it flies around, there's always 16 lines. Each line has multiple returns. Those returns are labeled as what angle they, the um, sensor was at and what, um, how far away the laser, LIDAR, LIDAR return was. And one of the key things is, again, we are getting returns from the rotors of the aircraft, and we'll use those to see those, uh, to see the pass of the aircraft as we actually make um, the point cloud. Now, the important thing to notice here is the aircraft is staying stationary and the world is spinning around it because these are the data taken relative to the aircraft. And what we need to do in the, the orthorectification process of building up the point clouds is fold in what, where was the aircraft, what direction was it pointing, how much was it pitched, how much was it rolled, how much was it rotated, um, and then that way we can stitch all these different um, returns together into a single point cloud. All right. So the next step that we do um, uh, is to take a look at the actual data, um, the IMU GPS data. Uh, so to do that, we generally use um, a, um, program that uh, I wrote, but that we can distribute to customers. It's a MATLAB executable. The customer doesn't need to have a license for MATLAB. We can share this thing with them and they can install it on their computer um, and they will be able to do this sort of analysis. So the first thing, this program, the window that pops up, it says select the IMU GPS data. So I'm gonna to go to that folder that we were looking at and I'm gonna open up the file called imugps.txt and it's gonna read that file and it's also gonna read that LIDAR PCAP index file. 
and it's going to tell us where the aircraft was, how it was flying as a function of time, and it will allow us to figure out where do we want to be um, when we start analyzing the LIDAR data. So it generates several pictures. This is our standard grid pattern that we fly over the parking lot where the aircraft flies forward, does a turn, flies back, does a turn, and all the data are taken in straight lines. And then this cross pattern here is our LIDAR calibration flight that we do over our building. The corner of the building is actually right about here, and we fly back and forth parallel to one side of the building. We go to a higher altitude, which you can see in this image right here. Um, we start out at a low altitude, and then we fly at a high altitude in a perpendicular direction, and that's the data that we're going to use to figure out what the pointing, uh, what the, the, the bore sighting of the LIDAR system is. So we're going to first look at the flight over the building, and then once with that information, we can take a look at the flight uh, over the parking lot. So I happen to know this, these regular bumps right here, this forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, that is the flight over the parking lot forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, whereas these, where we have some funny turns in it, is the, the cross pattern. So what I'm going to want to do is figure out where in this first portion it flies forward, takes a turn, and then comes back. And so I'm going to choose a time when it's coming towards the building, and then I'm going to create um, uh, a new data tip and I'm going to come to where it's coming back from the building. I'm going to look at these two times, 544 and 581. Those are seconds after the system started, and that's where I'm going to build my initial point cloud. So I'll start the LiDAR Tools program. The LiDAR Tools program has three tabs. One of them is Create Last. That's the LiDAR point cloud, so that's creating a point cloud. The second one is to create a digital elevation model, which we'll create from the point cloud. And the third one is to fuse the digital elevation model and this hyperspectral image to generate a hybrid image that contains not only the spectral information, but also the elevations of the areas that it flew over. So to start with, I'm going to try creating the last file. So my input file is going to be that um, LiDAR PCAP IDX file um, that I showed you, that it's the only one that shows up here, and that's going to have the times at which all the packets uh, were taken in. And then based on my analysis, I want to look at data from 544 to 581 seconds, to 581 seconds. And then I want to save that I want to, uh, into um, so that's going to be LiDAR, and I'm going to call it by its time, 541580. Is that? 544580. 544580. Okay, I'm going to save that. Um, now, I have already have the roll pitch in YAW that I know to be correct for this system because I've done it, but I'm going to show how we get to those numbers. This is the sort of thing that's done at the factory. Um, the user should not have to change these things, but it's good to know what errors in these systems. The, the, the LiDAR could have shifted slightly um, in handling since the, um, since the aircraft was flown. We haven't had problems with that, but I'm going to take go back to my default values of 90 and 0, and um, I'm going to go ahead and call this defaults. And so this is the nominal um, roll and pitch and yaw of the, uh, the offsets of the LIDAR relative to the GPS. So I'll go ahead and say process. And it notes down here that uh, there were dual returns uh, from the, the LIDAR. That means that each pulse will get two numbers that come back, one being the first and strongest return, the second being the last return. The basic idea is that if you're flying over vegetation, one of the returns will come from the top of the trees and one of the terms will come from the, um, 
one of the returns will come from the ground underneath. So now I made this file called LIDAR544580 defaults. And so I should be able to um, go into my process data folder. Here's the file that I just made. I have it associated with a program called Cloud Compare. Cloud Compare is something that you can download freely from the web. So when I double click on this uh, LAS file, it's going to open up in Cloud Compare. And that's the program that we use to look at our hyperspectral point clouds. There's two, bo two boxes that always show up in Cloud Compare. Always say, apply all, yes to all. What that basically does is it rescales the image so it's easy to see, but it doesn't mess with the raw data. So now here we have a point cloud where we're looking over our building. I can do one simple process in uh, Cloud Compare, and I'm going to go to Tools, Projection, Export Coordinates to Scalar Fields, OK, and now my image is scaled by height. Now, I do see that I don't see any red because I actually have a few points. I'm going to make the points bigger here. One point that's way up in the sky. So I'm not going to worry about that right now, but what I can do is by changing my histogram, I can get the tops of the building is sort of yellow. The ground underneath is blue. It's all scaled by um, the height. And what we want to look at here is a side view of the building. And note that there are actually two different images of the roof. I see the building, but and my aircraft was flying. Oh, I made one mistake here. I'm going to redo this. In the LiDAR tools, I had told it to have a minimum distance of one. That means it will not take any returns that are more than one meter, that are less than one meter away from the LIDAR. When the aircraft flies, the rotors are less than one meter from the LIDAR. So by choosing zero, one, I had gotten rid of the trajectory. It's useful in analyzing the, the data to see where was the aircraft, how was it flying, was it on the ground, was it rising or falling, was it making some weird turn all those things are useful to see why the data look um, the way that they do. And so when that's done um, going, we should have this same image, but in addition to the stuff on the ground, we should be able to see the, um, the trajectory of the aircraft. So I'm going to go back and reopen that file. And now when we look at it, we will see in addition to the points on the ground, we can see the flight of the aircraft, where it flew along and made a wide turn, that's this turn right here. Okay, so that is the part of the trajectory that we see, and we notice that it seems to be starting and stopping in about the same place. And now, once again, when we look, we see that there are two images of the roof, and that they are offset perpendicular to our direction of motion. So the aircraft was flying along in this direction, and there was an error in the roll of the aircraft. So I'm going to say maybe my roll offset wasn't exactly 90 degrees, maybe it was 88 degrees. So I'll run this again, and I'm going to call this for my own bookkeeping R88. So it's a roll offset of 88 degrees. And I'm going to make this image again. And it's an iterative process. I make a cloud, look at it in cloud compare, make a cloud, look at it in cloud compare, until the different parts of the trajectory, all the different points line up on top of each other. Then we figure we've got our LIDAR system bore sighted to our GPS data. Now, in this case, we're using, um, if we look here, it's using the post process file. Okay, so that is the, uh, the smooth best estimate, estimate of trajectory that's generated by our hard performance GPS. There is no pro post process file generated from our standard GPS. Processing is just the same. Uh, in the end, the vertical resolution is significantly better for the high performance GPS. So I'm going to now open up this file that says, uh, where am I? Um, where did I save that guy? Oh, yes. Um, 
I'm going to go to C, data, UAV stuff, LIDAR, this guy, process data. There should be that one that says roll 88. Open it up. Again, yes to all. And what I'm hoping is that I've gotten a better value, so I should have another image or another pair of images of the roof that are closer together. So if I turn off the old one, I've now made the roof, the two, two images of the roof, much closer together. There's still a gap between them, but it is no more, nowhere near as much as it was when I had the roll at 88 degrees. So I cruise through all this stuff, and now I'm going to go back in here, and who remembers what those values were? 87.4. And how about our pitch? Positive or negative 0.2? Okay, um, 0.2. Um, and so now I'm going to say, actually, my, my roll was 87.4 P0.2. Run this guy again. And we're fortunate that we have this building that is made of a couple of big squares that have high edges. It's really, really good for us. If somebody has to do this sort of stuff in the field, it's a very good idea for them to fly over a building that has sharp sides and is of moderate size, not super tall, that they can fly over in multiple directions to try and do this um, aligning of the various point clouds. Oh, that, this is our, that's the wonderful thing, is that our factory happens to be in this building. We do all this stuff, and in general, you shouldn't have to do this again, but knowing something about finding little errors is, I think, a good idea. So now I'm going to open um, my new guy. Um, open. Yes to all, and I'm hoping it's going to fill in right here. It's going to show up right in between the two versions of the roof. And I'm going to zoom in way over here. I turn off this guy. I see one roof, and I don't see multiple versions of it. So at this point, I'm going to say, I think I have my roll pretty much correct, but I don't think I have my pitch correct. I think it was a minus 0.2. The reason I say that is if I go here, tools, projection, export coordinates to scalar fields, and I look at the, the windows in our entryway of our building, there's a single grid that's not double. And pitch is this direction, and I think I have two images that are offset by a little bit. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to make this pitch minus 0.2, and I'm going to change that in my file name, rebuild that point cloud. And when the status bar is done, it should be, there should be a little line at the bottom that says, finished writing LAS file. Now it's done. Okay. So I'm going to open up that guy. And this one with the minus 0.2. Open that one up. Yes to all. And we'll zoom in here. And if we turn off the other one, we get single lines of that part of, of, of the um, building. And so I think we're pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is, so I can certainly take this guy, export the coordinates to scalar fields. There are those points up in the sky. I will change my histogram down here to make red. If we look here in the histogram, there's a whole bunch of points at a low altitude. That's the ground. There's a whole bunch of points here at a medium altitude. That's the roof of the building. And then there's a few points up here, up in the sky. That's the trajectory of the aircraft. So I'm going to bring my histogram down so it's below where the aircraft is and just above the roof. So I start to see some features on the roof. And there is my initial point cloud of our building, but it's a little cut off because we didn't see uh, the, the, the full trajectory. 
So now I'm going to go back and I want this entire trajectory of the LIDAR calibration, and it's going to be at multiple altitudes as well. And that's going to be sort of the final check that the bore sighting has all been done right. And so if I go back and look at the trajectory, no, it was this trajectory, our last one, I'm going to zoom back out, reset to original view. I'm going to zoom around just the part that was the flight over the building, and I'm going to move my start. This is the beginning of my flight. And I'm going to move the, this guy to the end of the flight. I think, yeah, about there. So that's going to be 536 to 690 are the times that I'm going to need to put in here. So I'll take this from 536 to 690. And I'm going to call this uh, just building. Okay, right, our built ding. Uh, and it's going to take a lot longer to process this because it's a lot, much larger amount of data. And then what we should end up with is a nice picture of the building with the trajectory. We can easily remove the trajectory in Cloud Compare. But when I get to the point of having things nice, then I will just eliminate the trajectory from the processing by changing that LIDAR rotation offset to minimum distance of one meter. And that guy's done, and I get finished writing LAS file, then we can load that guy up in Cloud Compare. So now I'm going to open up um, the one that says the full building, and if we notice it's 493 megabytes instead of just 142. That's a half a gigabyte. Okay, so I'm going to turn this one off Take this one, tools, projection, export coordinates to scalar field, OK. And now we have an image of our building with the aircraft flying over it. Um, I can again, there's two little bits here. That's the high portion of the flight, the low portion of the flight that we can see pretty well here that we flew horizontally, then flew up, and then flew horizontally again. So I'm going to bring... Here we can see something about the flight. It's sort of color-coded. Now, a couple of tricks in Cloud Compare. Um, if you lose your image, you can always click on this magnifying glass, and if the image has disappeared, it'll make it come back. Flipping right here gives you a full nadir view aligned north-south. There's a couple of other default views uh, to look at different sides of the image. But I'll start here looking down, and we'll zoom in on our building and everything looks pretty good. It's a little hard to see because it's all green, so I'm going to move now my histogram down till it's starting to color the top of the building, and we can see some, some features, um, roof structures on top of the building um, in this point cloud. And once again, we'll go and check it out. Single lines here. We look at the sides of the building. The other thing that we can do is cloud, in Cloud Compare is it auto-picks the rotation center. In general, you want to choose your own. Turn off auto, click the plus, and then I'm going to rotate about a point right here in our loading dock. And now that is my center of rotation, and I can look at the sides of the building. I don't see anything particularly weird. I can see individual branches on the trees. I can see the antenna on the roof of our building showing up as basically a single unit, so we have good registration throughout our point cloud. So now I'm going to want to make a digital elevation model, but not from this because we didn't take our spectral data here. We took our spectral data here over the parking lot. So I'm going to build a new point cloud just over the parking lot, and I can tell when I was over the parking lot, again, by looking at the trajectory. I flew over the building, then I flew over the parking lot in this grid pattern. This grid pattern shows up as this series of forward and back, forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. So if I choose to start 
from 818 to 970, though that is going to give me my flight over the parking lot. So I'll go back to LiDAR tools. I've got all the bore sighting coefficients saved. I'm probably going to go ahead and get rid of the trajectory because, well, I'll leave the trajectory. We can always um, get rid of that. And what were my numbers here? What did I say? Five. Uh, eight, eight, eighteen, and nine seventy. I'm sorry. Was it eight, eighteen, and nine seventy? Okay, certainly the last one was nine seventy. Was eight, eighteen. And good enough. Eight, eighteen. Eight, eighteen. Eight, one, eight to nine seventy. And this one, I don't need to really keep track of anything. I'm just going to call it parking lot. Okay. And I'm going to uh, check, yes, I have my special bore sighting coefficients. And I'm going to be including the trajectory. So once again, this is going to take a bit longer to process. Again, it's going to give me something on the order of a half a gigabyte file. Then I will take this file into Cloud Compare, clean it up a little bit. There's always going to be some LiDAR data that didn't come from the ground. There's certainly the returns from the rotors of the aircraft, also glint from the sun, potentially bugs, and potentially electronic noise can give us a few points in the sky that we always want to get rid of. There's a couple ways of doing that fairly straightforwardly in Cloud Compare, and I always want to look at the cloud in Cloud Compare before creating a digital elevation model because I don't want the trajectory of the aircraft in the digital elevation model. I don't want points up in the middle of the sky in the digital elevation model. So I'll go ahead. I'm going to get rid of all these files that I'm not using anymore. So now I've got the building. And now I'm going to load up the parking lot. And that should fill in this region over here where we can see a small amount of data from this turn. So you can... and. Uh, so we'll go here to the parking lot, tools, projection, export coordinates to scalar fields, OK. And now I see the trajectory over the parking lot. I didn't get a whole of it. That's, that's good enough. Um, and I can now take this cloud and clean it up a little bit. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I, so I do see the parking lot pretty nicely. Um, one interesting thing with the LiDAR is that Instead of showing coordinate Z, I can show the intensity. And what I end up with is a three-dimensional black and white image of the ground that we flew over. And depending upon our altitude, we can often see, you can see the lines in the parking lot here. Because the lines in the parking lot are white, and they reflect the LiDAR beam better than the gray parts of the parking lot. So. We'll go back to looking at our coordinate Z. I'm going to make my points very big so it's easy to see them to get rid of them. And then I'm going to take the scissors and clip, 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 clip. Nope, not going to do that. Um, start again. Clip, clip, clip. And I'm missing this one guy. And if I zoom in a little bit more, yeah, I can one more time get this one other straggler. The other way to do this is using this function here called the statistical outlier removal tool. And this, that one will decimate the point cloud. It will take away points that are not, that don't have nearest neighbors. It takes a long time, it takes a lot of processing, and it can um, get rid of points that you might like. So now I'm going to say File, Save, and I'm going to choose actually where it's going to save it, um, which is Data, UAV Stuff, LiDAR, Process Data, LiDAR point and Parking Lot, and this time it will ask me if I want to overwrite it. Yes. And in general, with, 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 with Cloud Compare, I always accept their defaults uh, for everything. Okay, 
So now I have this guy. One other thing that I can do is tools, projection, export to scalar field, OK. And it should color nicely to begin with. And then just to make it look really cool, shades, display, shades and filters, eye dome light. It's just a trick that really increases the three-dimensional um, nature of the image. Very good for making present, presentation images from the, uh, the three-dimensional data. We can obviously take these two different images and fuse them together into a single point cloud. So I've got LiDAR building cloud. Now I'm going to take that one and I'm going to make it into a digital elevation model. So I'm going to take that LiDAR point cloud that I just made, the one called LiDAR parking lot. I have choices of what I want to do. These are statistics on this point cloud. So basically what we do is we look straight down on the point cloud. We choose a grid uh, 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 and, and in that grid we will choose the maximum height point, the minimum height point, the mean of them, the standard deviation between them, how many there are. So there's a bunch of different statistics that we can do. In general, if we're looking to do ortho rectification, we want the max point cloud. And then it takes longer to make a finer resolution point cloud. So for this example, I'm just going to do a half a meter resolution. It is in print. It is fairly straightforward. It takes less than an hour to make a 0.1 meter uh, resolution, 10 centimeters. And if you're willing to wait a couple hours, you can get a um, point cloud or a digital elevation model with a resolution of uh, down to two centimeters. Notice as I change the, uh, the, the size of this point cloud, so if I go from 0.5 to 0.7, I end up with a, a, a coarser grid. If I went down to 0.1, you can start to see why it would take a lot longer because I'm going to have, what's that, um, 3,000 times 3,000, that's 9 million points um, in my, in my uh, digital elevation model. So let's go back to 0.5 where I'm going to have, uh, what, what's that, 450,000 um, points approximately. Okay, so I've chosen max and then I'm going to call this in the process data LiDAR port parking lot max BEM, and it's going to generate this digital elevation model. So I'm going to open up one of my files from this data set, and um, why don't I I'll look at one of the middle ones. When I'm doing ortho rectification, I only generally, when I'm figuring things out, I'm just going to select only the RGB bands. It makes the whole process going much go much faster. So here is, that's a terrible one. Let's open one that's a little further on. So if you notice, um, 2384, 275, yeah, so I'm going to use this one because we've already played with it before, obviously. Select RGB, open it up. No, nope, I don't want that one again. Because those are, those are what we did is we had two different, um, uh, two different captured polygons, one that was over the tarp and one that was over the parking lot. This one is over the parking lot. Okay. So now I'm going to go ortho rectification. And it's complaining because I don't have PPS data. So I can go and um, I'm going to choose a custom sensor. I'm going to use the post process file. And I don't know why these guys aren't done. And, um, we'll, and then I'm going to choose the dem that I just made. And so this is where, when I look at this, I'm going to look directly at these lines and say those are relatively straight. So therefore, I probably have the right value for the um, for invert columns, which is probably here checked. Okay, so I'm going to save this. I'm going to go ahead and do the ortho rectification and save the image. 
Okay, looks nice, looks square. Next, select RGB, create the data cube, open it up. And now I can take it and overlay it on the Google Maps. And if we look here, here's our parking lot, here's our stuff, and it lines up, the parking lot lines up pretty well. Those errors are actually generally due to um, misregistration of the Google Maps. This is probably, our data is probably actually better uh, than the Google Maps. So then the final thing that I'm going to do is to fuse the hyperspectral data and the digital elevation model. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to make a new digital elevation model where I'm going to include the minimum, the maximum, and the standard deviation. And so I'm going to call this full dim, and it's going to have all those different data in it. Uh, all right, so now I've made that dim, and I'm not going to bother looking at it. Um, I, I made it. The other one seemed to work pretty well, and I'm going to use that to fuse with the hyperspectral image that we just made. So I'll go here. The input file in this case is going to be the digital elevation model. And so I'm going to go to that one. Um, that I just um, made, uh, process data, the full dim. This full dim has multiple layers, the min, the max, the mean, the standard deviation. If it has multiple layers, it will not work in spectral view. A dim to be used for spectral view has to have just a single layer. But when we're doing this fusion, we can actually have all the different data. So we'll go ahead and choose that guy, full dim, okay? Um, then select the hyperspectral data cube. So that's going to be the one that we just made, all right? And then I want to call the name the, the, the output file to be essentially this So it's the hyperspectral data plus the digital elevation model. What we're doing is we're going to add several wavelength bands to the hyperspectral image, one of which is the max, one of which is the min, one of which is the standard deviation of the DEM. So that's all ready to go, and I will do that fusion. And we're going to wait until the end until it says uh, image creation finished. And then this image, we've chosen to do this type of fusion of the data because it's completely compatible with spectral view or NV or any other software that is capable of loading hyperspectral data files. And when you load the hyperspectral data file, if you ignore the first few entries, which are the, um, the DEM information, it's just a regular hyperspectral data file. So before I open it up, I'm going to take a look here at the header for this data file. So here's my plus dem. And if I notice, the bands are LIDAR min, LIDAR max, LIDAR mean, LIDAR standard deviation, HSI 480 nanometers, HSI 540 nanometers, HSI 670 nanometers. Um, now, the wavelengths that we've assigned to the LIDAR are just made up. We chose those to be numbers that are much smaller than any wavelength we would ever have, and they will show up at the beginning of any wavelength list. So now I have that. I should be able to open it up. So I'm going to open this guy that says plus dem. I'm going to select all the bands, and I open up this image. And by default, it has chosen the red and green and blue bands at 480, 540, and 670. I can take the red band, if I go back and look here, um, the first band is the LIDAR min, the second is the max, the third is the mean, the fourth is the standard deviation. So if I choose band number four as my red, then what I see is a little bit of red here 
that's where the light post is. Right, so it's a high object, so it shows up as something uh, red. Um, what was there's their minimum, there's our maximum mean. Oh, this one right here, where I have the red being the standard deviation. I think that was my last one. So with my red being the standard deviation, what I see is those objects that have some significant variation in height are now highlighted in this image. That being the trees, um, and right here the the um, the light in the in the parking lot, um, and that's basically it. Um, there's more, I'm sure more stuff that people can do by messing around with maybe having one of them be the uh, the, the standard deviation, the other the maximum. We can uh, really highlight edges and other things. But there we go. We've generated a point cloud. We've used the point cloud to generate a digital elevation model. We've used the digital elevation model to orthorectify hyperspectral image. And in the final um, thing, we've fused the hyperspectral image and the, uh, the digital elevation.